Hello everyone. So, um, consist consistent with other videos. Now I would like to show you a MATLAB example in a full code um, how to see how basically imp I implement this performance recovery idea in uh, in in action. All right. I am going to pick a simulation example. If you watch this video, um, when we were adding neurons in the first case, before we add, we start to add bias term and additional neurons to improve the performance of the neuroadaptive control architecture. For case one, we achieved a poor closed loop system performance. I am going to show the same performance so that you don't need to turn back to that video. So before I uh, proceed further, this is basically um, I modified that neuroadaptive control example case one here. Um, I only added here the PC term uh, for implement the corrective signal. And this is basically PC dot discretized form with regard to lambda. This is the form of V. V is included in the control signal and it also modifies the reference model so that we have the modified reference model trajectories. I also basically, um, for just for plotting, just for comparison purposes, I am also generating the ideal closed up system performance so that you are going to see as we increase lambda term for the corrective signal, the closed up system performance will approach to the ideal reference model. Again, take a screenshot, you can code it yourself. Uh, other than these modifications, I am using the same alpha for the nominal controller, same gamma for the adaptive control, same sigma 0.2 for the leakage term. And if you remember case one, I selected basically six neurons, uh, six radial basis functions to cover minus five to five compact domain. I am going to use the same example. Um, all right, so basically, <clears throat> more precisely on that um, neuroadaptive control uh, case one example i just implemented this control signal and with uh, six radial basis functions on theta and of course v was zero v was zero and we obtained this plot so in this plot basically you can ignore v i am not trying to recover the uh, <coughs> closed system performance this was the response that i just got and in that um, basically um, as explained here this was the closed system performance when v is zero so in the next figures we are now going to apply v to the control signal as well as the, the reference model system for the purpose of recovering the ideal closed system performance and here is the um, corrective signals uh, structure that is coming from the previous video all right, um, here, first of all, um, light blue plot shows the ideal not modified uh, reference model. I just generated this for comparison purposes so that with your eyes, you will see we indeed recover the ideal close-up system. All right, this, this plot is for the, we have a small lambda, which is 0.5. Even with small lambda, you will see that if you compare this figure with this, previous one we significantly state significantly getting approaches to the ideal close-up system so uh, there's a very great performance and uh, we did this without adding additional neurons because if you remember basically the case four of this video we also obtained a nice close-up system performance here i am not trying to say that you know um, you don't need more neurons. Always try to tune your adaptive controller as accurate as possible. If you need to insert more neurons to achieve better performance, achieve. This performance recovery idea is like a precaution. So if you basically, if your system uh, starts to operate unexpected, you can basically apply this performance recovery idea to even make the adaptive control systems better. So always try to tune it best to the best of your knowledge and then use this performance recovery idea to further improve your close-up system. All right, but I am going to use case one because I needed to demonstrate that, you know, we have a, uh, we can recover basically, if we recover the worst case scenario, we can do better in other cases. That's my point. 
All right, so now this, we have small uh, oscillations, which is uh, from an engineering standpoint, I think, you know, it is a great close-up system performance, even with 0.5. But if you increase lambda 5, you basically have a truly remarkable close-up system performance, which is precisely matches as accurate as possible with the ideal closed-loop system performance shown in light blue. You have, you know, you can increase a little bit more to get rid of this, a little bit, you know, little for improvement, but come on. I mean, engineering, this is an ideal performance, and to be honest with you, this is also such a nice performance with 0.5. All right, now I would like to play a little bit more. And um, for these two figures, um, corrective signals are, what happened? For these two figures, um, basically corrective signals were zero here and here. Um, I am increasing sigma from 0.2 to two. So we are increasing the magnitude of the leakage term by 10 times. And I am doing this intentional. Let's say I am trying to tune an adaptive control and um, and I mentioned that in, in the leakage modification video, if you really increase the sigma of this term, it can pre prevent, uh, uh, adapt it can prohibit adaptation so that it can stop adaptation process that then your system will be bonded by the theorem, but it will act weird. And this is also a bonded response and which is acting weird. We're, we are very far away the ideal closed up system trajectories. So I just made this worse. And the question is, can we still recover the performance? Answer, yes, right? I am showing you here, I am showing you proofs. And in the previous video, I showed that by increasing lambda, you will recover the performance. But of course, human beings, I mean, we, myself as well, when I was a student, I would like to see also a demonstration theory. Theory is nice, but theory and simulation must go along with each other. If your theory is basically correct, but your simulation doesn't illustrate this, then this means two things. Either your theory is wrong or simulation wrong and correct one of them. All right. In this case, we will be consistent. Um, and uh, that's the main purpose of all these um, video series, consistency, theory, and its application. Well, um, here I basically start with lambda 5. Now, because our adaptive control performance is uh, way off, we, this is still a very good acceptable performance. You have some you know, oscillations here. If you increase lambda to 25, if you are obsessed about getting crisp response like this, you can do so. This is a perfect response from engineering. This is also such a nice uh, response. You are controlling an um, uncertain system. Lambda 5 is not very high and 25 is not high uh, either, but this is also a nice performance. So um, I would like to end this video with a remark. Lambda equals to five was doing a great job in here in correcting the behavior of this case. Now for the much worse case, it is doing great, but it starts to have some uh, oscillations. So. So I, would, I need to mention the following remark. If your adaptive control response is way off, then this performance recovery corrective signal will indeed recover your uh, close-up system performance, but you are going to need a larger gain. If your adaptive control system is uh, doing already an okay to good job, then you don't need that such a high lambda value. So smaller lambda values will also do the job. Always remember that. And again, take my two cents. Try to tune your adaptive control as good as possible and use this performance recovery corrective signal to even make its performance uh, magnific magnificent. All right, take care.